When I taught at the University of Houston in the creative writing program, we required the poets to take workshops in, in, in fiction writing, and we required the fiction writers to take workshops in poetry. And the reason for that is because the fiction writers seem to need to learn how to pay greater attention to language itself, to the way that language works. The poets needed to learn to pay greater attention to character and to narrative. That is, many poets don't know how to tell a story and they don't have a sense of how to put things in order to tell a story. And we thought that poets could learn from um, fiction writers something about developing a character over time who wasn't just you um, and also creating a narrative structure. So I think it's true that um, that's something that poetry can go to school on fiction. Poetry can go to fiction to learn. I think that the, the, the deepest thing is that many fiction writers tell stories but are not elegant writers. Um, but we're not writing journalism when we're making literature. We are trying to make something that lasts in language. And there's no question that many fiction writers began as poets. And it's hard for me to think of any good fiction writers who don't also read poetry. That fiction writers learn about the development of metaphor. The, the use of rhythm, the way that language is compacted um, in order to express the, the feelings that uh, express their own feelings and the feelings of their characters. So I think fiction goes to poetry for the intensity of its use of language. When I was young, I did. Um, and it, in fact, when I was young, I wrote everything and I thought I would be an all round writer, that I would write everything. When I was in my early 20s, I still had that idea. And I wrote an unpublished novel, and I wrote a lot of short stories. But what I, what I, what, what I discovered about myself is that my temperament is so fiery in terms of what I like in literature, that I like so much intensity, that too much was happening all the time. It was, it was just like starting with too much adrenaline and you stayed at a, and that adrenaline rush all the time. Well, it turns out that doesn't work for fiction. Fiction has to take, a novel takes place over time. It's a historical narrative. And it needs to have a series of peaks and valleys and to move through development. You can't just start at the highest pitch and stay there. Um, but you can at a, in a lyric poem. And so I found my temperament is very much drawn to, to lyric poetry and for the compression of lyric poetry. So um, it seems that I have the, the temperament of a, of, a, of a poet, not entirely of a fiction writer. There's a debate in the whole history of poetry between the plain style and the golden or oriet style. And the poetry is continually in some kind of relationship between these two pulls, something more baroque and ornate, something more ornamental, um, and something more plain spoken, something simpler. And I, I feel the tugs of those two traditions um, in, say, the 17th century or in Spanish Baroque poetry or in the work of John Donne, who I admire very much. Um, and so what I would say is I myself have a, especially as I've gotten older, um, I long for clarity and I long for the, the pure, clear word. Um, but by the, drive, by, by, by the drive of the feeling and the intensity of the expression and the thing you're trying to express and make, you hope that the words have wings. That is, you're looking for something that will lift off. Now, how to get that lift off, no one knows exactly, and there's no recipe for it. If there was, everyone would be writing great poems. Everyone would be going to school with Emily Dickinson and writing those you know, remarkable lyrics of hers, or writing Shakespeare sonnets. Um, but what you're looking for is a kind of clear language that gets a kind that gets a depth charge that lifts it and gives it wings so you hear the phrase brightness falls from the air and you know you're in the presence of poetry that something has happened to the language the words themselves brightness falls from the air 
are all very clear and very simple, but when they come together in this particular way, they've got a radiance and a beauty that stands all alone. And I think that what is that? The observation of light, the clarity of the feeling, the sense of wonder the words give you, no one knows exactly. But you're seeking in this combination of words to find something new and fresh that will strike a deeply resonant chord. So that when we read Sappho now, uh, it's as powerful to us as when it was written um, in Lesbos so many centuries ago.